Many questions remain about Sunday's nuclear alert debacle. Millions of mobile phones across the province received emergency notification of a problem at the Pickering nuclear power plant, only to find out that it was a test that went live by accident. The province's solicitor general has faced harsh criticism over the past couple of days over the incident, some saying the handling of the mistake was just as bad. If people lose confidence in this system, the ability to use it when there is a real emergency will be impaired. That's dangerous. Ontario's energy critic Peter Tobbins has called for a full investigation into what led to the mistake and why it took so long for the province to issue a retraction message. The province's solicitor general chalked it up to human error. Sylvia Jones says the system is tested twice a day, but somehow during routine testing, the nuclear alert went live. Jones is adamant that a full investigation is underway, but Tobbins argues it shouldn't be the ministry looking into the matter. There needs to be independence so people don't just think it's the minister looking after herself or the Ford government looking after itself. The emergency alert was sent out to millions of mobile phones just before 7.30 in the morning on Sunday. Ontario Power Generation tweeted that it was an error about 45 minutes later, but there was no word from the province until a second mass message more than an hour and a half after the fact. Should it have taken more than an hour for that retraction message to be sent out, though? I, in my opinion, no. Uh, there was a process where the um, individuals were confirming that there was, in fact, no activity at the Pickering site, um, but it's still too, too long. Then there's the matter of wording. Why was it so vague, the, the, the nature of the message? Because it was a test message, so it was never for public consumption. How do you think you'll be able to uh, re restore people's faith in this system? We will find out exactly what happened um, at the uh, Emergency Operations Centre and then ultimately come forward with uh, suggestions for improvements because it cannot uh, happen again. No timeline yet on when those recommendations will be put forward, though Jones anticipates it will not take long. In the meantime, Liberal MPP Mitzi Hunter has written an open letter to Ontario's ombudsman asking for an independent investigation of the matter. Now, head on City News, we speak to the company that runs the province's emergency alert software, why they say it would be very difficult to accidentally send a province-wide alert. The province has a lot to answer for after Sunday's accidental province-wide nuclear alert message. The Solicitor General says it was human error, a test message that somehow went live. But earlier today, we spoke to a representative from the company that runs the emergency alert software. He says sending a mass message by accident would be difficult to do. There's a training platform uh, that can be used for test purposes, for uh, training exercises and so on. Um, so those alerts there on the training platform don't go up. But as far as the license is concerned, there are steps in place to make sure that the user, when it, they log in, they confirm their intent of sending an alert. Belanger adds the testing system and live system are on two separate platforms. Now, we also spoke with an expert in nuclear energy who agrees the wording of these messages should be more clear. If you say a nuclear incident, uh, if you're a nuclear engineer, a nuclear incident is not the same as a nuclear accident. If you're uh, in the general public, a nuclear incident, you, you think of the worst, right? The message is for everybody, right? And you, it's, I think when there's some, some consideration taken for um, how it might be received. Now, there's obviously much more to this story. If you want to learn how the emergency system works and the safeguards that are in place to prevent these kinds of mistakes, you can just scan the code on your screen now using your phone's camera. A link will pop up. When you click on it, it'll take you to the full interview with the Director of Public